Hi everyone, welcome back to Now I See. I'm Sherry Bahum. Today we're continuing with um, Anne Marie and we will learn about how she got to know Christ and her baptism story. Welcome Anne Marie and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So um, tell us about um, your story for accepting Christ. So how did you get to, to know him? Okay, so when I um, met my husband, my now husband, um, he, he's actually, his background is Egyptian, but his father is actually um, Coptic Catholic. So um, at that time, we arranged our wedding. It was very uh, easy because having been raised Catholic myself, we just found a church we were happy to be married in. It wasn't a church either of us were connected to. We actually just chose that particular church because it was close to our reception venue. <laughs> and really ha our wedding ceremony was straightforward. We did have a Coptic Catholic priest do a blessing, um, but otherwise it was the Roman Catholic priest that married us. And at that time, we were just continuing our life our married life um, and started our family. We did baptize our first two children through um, the Coptic Catholic Church actually. So it wasn't until approximately five or six years ago um, and by then we had had all four children so we had our, our younger two um, that we actually moved away from Sydney and we moved to Wollongong. In Wollongong, uh, we'd also moved with my in-laws and I knew that they were really missing their friends and their network of their Egyptian community that they had in Sydney. So I researched if there was an Egyptian community that existed in, in the Wollongong area. And what I found was uh, a Coptic uh, Orthodox Church in Wollongong. So uh, when I raised this with my in-laws, my mother-in-law was raised Coptic Orthodox. So she was very excited that I had found that. And over time, they started attending. Uh, we attended, my husband and I attended, not regularly, but we attended if it was um, you know, Easter or Christmas. But to be honest, I still had very little knowledge of of that particular um, of church. the yeah of that church. So um, again, we were still a bit far from church, my husband and I, and we would. I was just happy that my in-laws had had a place where they had started to make new, new friends, but they felt comfortable because they spoke the same language, and they were really familiar with their faith, and they could practice their faith. Um, quite easily. Now I know there isn't a big difference between the Coptic Orthodox and the Coptic Catholic actual mass and, and rituals. So they, they fit into that very easily and we're happy to continue um, attending mass regularly. Um, it was actually the priest um, Abuna Daniel Fanus that was ordained for the Wollongong Church that really worked on myself and my husband uh, once he'd met us a few times. He really never gave up on us. He kept on persisting and um, trying to get us to attend more regularly with my in-laws, but also for, for our sake. So, but was your husband um, Orthodox by then or was he Catholic as well? No, so he was still um, Catholic and our two children, first two children. Mm. Um, so what happened eventually, uh, Abuna Dan, he worked his magic and he, he convinced us to christen our younger two, baptise our younger two Orthodox. Coptic Orthodox and on that day he anointed the, the whole family so that we could then accept the Holy Communion and yeah we haven't looked So back. all the family got baptised in one day? We did, yeah. How, so, how was this day? Uh, well it took some convincing for my husband because um, he doesn't like to be 
you know, the, the centre of attention. So he didn't, he wanted to perhaps do this where no one was there. But um, we, we, we agreed on a particular day and it was a Sunday after Mass and the, the whole um, church they actually stayed, they made a celebration for us afterwards and they all had gifts and it was just, uh, it was amazing. They were really supportive and never once did we think about being the in the spotlight. It was just, you know. All family. Yeah, it was lovely. Okay, um, so first of all you, ent you entered the Coptic Church but you you weren't convinced by by the faith just yet. Mm -hmm. So how, how long did it take, um, like, did it take you and your husband to to get baptized? How long was this period? Um, oh, it was probably, it could have even been, you know, 12 to 18 months or, or longer, actually. It may have even been two years, I'm not really sure. Um, it was just back then still living in darkness. We, we didn't, um, again, like I said, I was happy that my in-laws had found their, their place. And to me, that was what I had reached out to the, that community for. So for me, it had served its purpose. Mm -hmm. And my in-laws kept saying, look, these people, you have to come and, um, you know, but still, I, I know even back then we would make a mockery of them, like not like slander them, but we would sort of be like, oh yeah, we're going out for breakfast on a Sunday. Like it was, you know, you go like, and we'd make a joke of it or whatever, not realizing that we were just living, like I say, in darkness, not when you now see how you can live your life um, and it goes full circle mm. how those people that are serving you, you know, um, like why, like what makes them want to serve you, like who am I that these people never gave up on us, they, you know, from Abunadan to the, like really everyone at the Wollongong Church, why did they want us there? And um, once you're a part of it and, you know, actually it's the first time even being raised Catholic, it just used to be, I knew all the responses to the Mass, but I never heard what I was actually saying, or I never heard what, what I was that. responding to. Mm. When, when you have that realisation, the words you're saying, the words that are being spoken to you, you know, like breakfast is not important anymore, like that's where you want to be. So was, was the people's love that attracted you to, to the church or was there another reason as well? Um, I think it's an it's a entire package, it's, it's everything. Um, it's, it's something you can't really touch or feel or, you know, it's not something tangible you can say. Um, this is what draws me to the church or um, it's just something you can't explain that you don't know is lacking in your life until you've experienced it for yourself and then you realize that no matter what you're going through there are people that will support you there is more importantly than that there is a Jesus and God that will never forsake you and that's amazing. Did you attend the Coptic liturgy before your baptism? Yes. How was your first impression? <laughs> or the first one? Uh, well, the, one of the hardest things for me to get used to was the incense. Um, mm. I'm sure in the Catholic Church they have the incense but only at funerals. So <laughs> when I first smelt this I was thinking, oh, who died? <laughs> Why am I smelling this? So that was um, something even when now my, if I get my parents to attend, I know like that's something that they get, have to get used to as well. But um, I don't know, like what was hard to sit through for an hour in like a Catholic mass, it's just easy. Like I say, 
it's the first time I listened to a sermon properly, the first time I pay attention to the readings, and it, the time goes very quickly. So, when you took your decision that you want to get baptised at the Coptic Church, um, what was your, your family's um, reaction to this, your parents? Um, I think my parents were never... Um, I, I, I actually really don't know what their thoughts were. They, they wouldn't have minded. They, they know it's, you know, mine and my husband's de decision. And they, they attended the baptism. They were just happy that we were attending mass and raising our children in, in a church environment because that's what they were used to and that's how they attempted to raise us. Okay, um, so after your baptism, did you notice anything about you that changed or others noticed about you in your life? Not immediately, but more now. So it's almost been um, four years probably since then. Um, and now I do notice a difference. I know I'm not ashamed of my faith. I have never been able to speak openly about it prior to this um, with work colleagues who may be, you know, of other faith or atheist or anything. I, I feel like for the first time I can speak about my faith and um, be open and proud and it's what I love seeing in my children is that they they think it's so second nature now. We pray before meals to um, if they are singing church hymns or you know religious songs they learn in Sunday school. They're not ashamed, and yeah, I, I just think yeah you can definitely see. That is something that prior, like previously, I wouldn't have spoken on. I, I wouldn't have spoken about Jesus. Um, and I didn't have the knowledge. Not that I know much, and that is another aspect that I'm enjoying, is learning. And I'm learning with my children um, that all the amazing uh, miracles that Jesus performed, all, everything. So, yeah, it's been great. That's really great. So you mentioned that um, uh, your, your husband is Egyptian. Yes. But um, you, uh, so after you got married and got kids, you asked him to, um, or you convinced him to be baptized in, in the Orthodox Church. Normally we hear um, stories of Egyptians, you know, um, convincing the wives or the husbands to and to, to be baptized and then get married so um, tell us um, about like your experience in this okay it's the vice so I, I guess we were both convinced together really it wasn't that um, I convinced him it was probably easier for him because for one thing his mother is Coptic Orthodox in Egypt when he was growing up in Egypt he would tell me he attended both um, the Catholic Christmas and um, Orthodox Christmas so he was definitely more familiar with the Orthodox faith than I was but it was more that I could see through his parents through Abu Nadan and through um, the, the whole congregation in Wollongong that um, it, was, it was a good faith to be a part of, a good community to be a part of. So um, I do think though we were convinced together, probably from Abu Nadan and his parents, but uh, it wasn't like, by then it wasn't a hard decision. At that time, two of our children were baptised and two were not baptised anything. So um, I was just grateful that as a family then we could all be baptised and share the same faith. This is also how God works in that 
if we hadn't have moved to Wollongong, quite easily we could have still been, you know, continuing our life. Yes, married in the Catholic Church, two children baptised Coptic Catholic, but really non-practising, you know, faith believers. So that's how God works. Had we have not moved and I didn't look into finding my in-laws some Coptic or some Egyptian community, we would never have found the Orthodox Church. My husband was very familiar with the Orthodox Church in his youth, like um, university age, or end of high school and university age. He attended St. Mark's and, and was very active um, youth participant and he was really familiar at that time with the Orthodox Church but was also being raised Coptic Catholic so he was definitely more familiar with the Orthodox Church at that time. When I met him he didn't speak of this, he didn't, um, it, it was not an issue, we, we quite easily agreed on getting married at the church we got married at we were just going through life where we both knew there was a God and that was it. The so, was a side. Yeah, so yeah. he never spoke of his time at the Orthodox Church. He was, he, that was his decision. He was bringing himself there. He um, was really, now I know how happy he was, but it became it became difficult for him to continue because by the time he got his university degree and was working, he then couldn't also, on top of his workload, get himself to church. So it just became, again, probably for him, a time in his life where he didn't give the church his priority. Well, unfortunately, we have run out of time. Thank you so much for your time today. Experiencing Christ does not end at the baptism, but it just begins. Please tune in for our next episode to know the new and Marie after baptism. Thank you. I'm Sherry Bahum. God bless.